Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we are going to study a very important topic, which is the ECG paces, and then after that we have to, you know, study how to interpret the ECG. It's very important to know before the paces and then go for more advanced topics about the ECG interpretation. So now we have to speak about the paces of the ECG. Learning models, we have to actually speak about the ECG paces and how to analyze this rhythm, normal sinus rhythm, heart arrhythmias, and the diagnosis of myocardial infarctions and advanced 12 lead interpretation. All these things we have to get it in more and more videos about this. Now we have to speak about the normal impulses conduction and from where these impulses come inside your heart and how the physiology and anatomy you know in the or in your heart so now we have to speak in very important thing which is the normal impulses conduction the uh, sinoatrial node where is the sinoatrial node this is the sinoatrial node this is you know very important node inside the heart which is the main pacemaker of the heart that is our that generates an action potential this action potential goes to the wall of the atria and then goes also for the av node and spread all over the ventricles okay so the pathway of these impulses that occur inside your heart is actually the sinoatrial node and then a, a branches here within the atrial wall and go to the av node AV node, it is the only window between the atria and ventricles that has the ability uh, to conduct an action potentials. The other tissue here, it is called annulus fibrosis, which is not able to actually conduct an action potential. So when the AV node is depolarized, it takes more time and appear on the ECG machine as isoelectric line. And then the action potential go to the pendle of Hess. Yes, this is pendle of Hess. This one here is pendle of Hess. The pendle of Hess then divided into right and left pendle branches. Okay? Yes. And the pendle branches actually divided to and small and small divide divisions which is the Parkinchi fibers. Okay? So the pendle branches then divided into a Parkinchi fibers that actually responsible for the contraction and relaxation of the heart. So this is how the impulses is generated within the heart. Yes, pendle branches, left, right, right and left. Yes, right and left pendle branches and then the Parkinji fibers here within the ventricular wall. So when the sinoatrial node start fire, you know, an action potentials and then goes to the atria. When the atria is depolarized, it appear as a P wave within the ECG machine okay and actually when the AV node you know it start to be tubularized it's it very very small electric events it's very very small electric events that's not appear on the ECG but it's appear as isoelectric line yes it takes a while why this time here this is very important time to get the ventricles to fill with the blood and then the ventricles start contracted. So when the pendle of his and AV node and sinoatrial node debolarized, it's, you know, we're speaking about the PR interval. The PR interval is actually telling us how much time the impulses is generated and then conducted to the AV node or atrioventricular junction. And then actually the impulses goes through the pendle branches the right and the left pendle branches and when they depolarize it actually that means the ventricle is depolarized so it appears as a QRS complex. When the ventricle is depolarized actually the atria is start repolarized but it's not appear on the ECG machine because the strongest events it's for the ventricle so it appears more predominant. Actually then repolarization occur for the atria and appear as a T wave. Okay, so the QRS complex, as we say, the P wave is for atrial depolarization. Yes, this is the P wave. It's you know telling us that the atria is depolarized. The QRS complex, this one, is telling us that the you know ventricle is depolarized, and the T wave, which is here, it's telling us that the ventricle is repolarized. But actually, the repolarization of the atria is not appear as we say because it occur at the same time as the ventricle 
occur and appear as a QRS complex so the atrial repolarizing region not appear because the predominant electric event that come from the ventricles okay so now we have to speak about the intervals like PR interval what is PR interval PR interval is telling us about the atrial depolarization which is the P wave and also the delay that happened on the AV junction what we mean by AV junction two things I mean the AV node and tunnel of Hess what is the benefit of delaying the impulses in that time? He said the delay is for allowing time for the atrial to be contract before the ventricles is contract and filling the ventricles with the blood. Now we have to speak about the pacemakers of the heart. Very important. Do you think how much pacemakers we have in our heart? Actually, we have many, not just the SA node as you are thinking. For example, let's you know imagine that person with a disease within the uh, SA node or the obstruction occur for the blood vessels that supply the SA node. Do you think this SA node will be obliterated? Yes, maybe it's become necrotic or ischemic, so it's not able to generate more in action potentials. So who will become the leader in this case? We will see actually. The SA node is a dominant pacemaker in the normal person with an intrinsic rate from 60 to 100 beat per minute. Yes, it's generate an action potential from 60 to 100 bit per minute. That means if you cut the vagus nerve, yes, your heart will become so fast. But our rate here in, in, the nor in this normal range, as we say now, because, you know, the suppression that occur from the vagus nerve. The another pacemaker, you have to be very, 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 very oriented about this information. The SA node is the dominant pacemaker, very important in healthy, normal person. Also, we have another pacemaker, which is the AV node. AV node is also is a pack up pacemaker with intrinsic rate from 30 to 60. What does that mean? That means if you find a person with a rate from 40 to 60, this is maybe AV node in Oregon, not SA node in Oregon. Yeah, it's appear as we call it a bradycardia. And the ventricular cells, I mean Parkinson's system or something like that, it also can be a pacemaker by itself when these two is not able to produce an action potential. But the rate will become more and more slower. That means from 20 to 45 beat per minute. Okay, now we completed our discussion about the heart and how the action potential is generated, from where it generated, and the pathway of the generation, how it's appeared on the ECG. Now we have to speak a little bit about the ECG paper. And what do you know about the ECG paper? Okay, yes, this is very, very common type of ECG paper that we can see it in everywhere. Yes, we have a very small squares and large squares. For simplifying this, we will magnify this large square to here, up, okay? So this is one large square which is contain 25 small squares, okay? Yes, what I mean by this, I mean the following. He said that the horizontally, horizontally and horizontal, this is a horizontal and this is vertical, okay? One small square is equal to 0.04 seconds. What does that mean? This is for the pointer in the ECG machine to move in very constant speed, which is 25 millimeters per second. What does that mean? I mean, from here to here horizontally is what? Is one millimeter. From here to here, it's one millimeter so this is called a square because it's equal so here one millimeter one millimeter one millimeter one millimeter one millimeter what does that mean that means we have five millimeter and five millimeters how much large squ uh, large squares we need to make 25 millimeters yes you are right we need five large squares because each one is contain five small square i mean rows that means what that means 25 small squares that means 25 millimeter which is the machine is constantly you know run on this way so the large square is 0.2 seconds yeah this information you have to memorize them the large square equal 0.5 five large squares equal one second because 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 five times it means one 
second okay and five times from 0 0.04 0 0.04 0 0.04 0 0.04 0 0.04 0 0.04, 0 0.04 it's equal to 0 0.2 which is one lark square that's how things occur so as we said here the height of this square is five millimeters that means half millivolts two large squares means one millivolt okay yes that's right when we go from down to up we call it a millivolts we become horizontally we call it what seconds or millimeters as you want okay okay very important vertically one large box is equal to one large box okay be very aware of this information is equal to 0 0.5 millivolt okay very important to know this each three seconds is equal what 15 log squares yes we say one second equal five log squares so five log squares five log squares five log squares that means 15 log squares in each one is one second one second in three seconds we have 15 log boxes is made by vertical lines these help when calculating the heart rate very important and we will study very very well how you can calculate the heart rate thank you very much and i see you in the next video goodbye